Welcome to the Potter Blog site, February 22nd, 2014. Maximum alert. The Department of Energy is funding free whole body nuke scans and lung scans for victims of the airborne plutonium disaster who live within 100 miles of the waste isolation pilot plant in Loving, New Mexico. By contrast, uh, the victims of the Fukushima disaster, they were only offered a 50% uh, off deal on uh, the same type of body scans. Now here is the uh, site where uh, from the New Mexico State University, CERMEC. The headline is CERMEC detects trace amounts of ammunition from WIP, no danger to the public. Now he even down here, in something we find just disgusting, uh, they make a correlation between eating a banana and being exposed uh, to radiation from their previous detections radioactive plutonium detections and americium detections that they previously made. You know, we challenge these people to go uh, source some plutonium, which is not difficult now there in Loving, New Mexico, or some americium-241 and to either inhale or eat the equivalent amount of radioactivity from uh, plutonium and americium as is found in the radioactivity from potassium in a banana. You know, it, it, is it any wonder why uh, the Dole Fruit Company isn't offering whole body scans for anybody who eats a banana? The fact that these people call themselves an engineering organization, College of Engineering, we find this disgusting. We've found some other disgusting activity we found from them. You know, there've uh, been reports that these individuals, these people from this college, and the DOE have made claims that. Uh, Plutonium won't fly far because it's heavy. At best, at best, we believe that's people who are uh, talking outside of their realm of knowledge. And that's at, that's at best. But you would think a environmental monitoring group would be aware of how far plutonium flies based on what's been detected from Fukushima. Maybe they should, maybe they should go talk to their aerospace department. Or maybe their fluids department. And see how far... Uh, a heavy atom of plutonium and, or americium can fly in the wind. Yeah, that's some incredible stuff here. They also list uh, their level of their detection that they uh, that they made, and they claim in here. Let's see where it is. Uh, show, they say it sh their airborne detection showed 0.64 becquerels of americium and 0.046 becquerels of plutonium. You know what they don't tell you. Is, is that their airborne detection was likely based on an event that took five days. So uh, five days, they took whatever, we suspect they took whatever radiation they're reading they got out of that filter and divided it out by five days worth of air being pulled across that filter. Whereas these same people have been apparently quoted as saying that, that they thought the release only happened over a few moments before the air filtration kicked in at the website. You know, so while we question the uh, morals of these people, I don't think that bothers them. I mean, if they're willing to make uh, comparisons to bananas and between inhaling plutonium and eating a banana, then we believe that they're either dupes or that they're evil. We don't know which one it is. But uh, I don't think that bothers them. But what should, what should bother them as engineers is if they make a, uh, a reading based on units that involve days worth of volumetric airflow and then they use that uh, as a comparison to claim something that they suspect only took moments of time. You know, that's a unit mismatch that an engineer should not make. Maybe that'll bother them a little bit. Poor engineering. But all these things are only our opinion. You can look at the math yourself. But one thing you need to consider out of this is this free whole body scan is basically not going to detect any plutonium inside your body. Plutonium only travels, uh, the radiation from plutonium only travels a very short distance. So they're not going to directly detect any plutonium. They might detect some associated americium-241 with it. Uh, these tests work best if people would have had a detection or a, a test done before the disaster and then again after. There's even a more troubling aspect to this, and that is, is that these people who are getting these tests, this whole area is really 
like a giant lab rat guinea pig testing system. In essence, what it's uh, driven out to be. Same thing happened in the Bikini of Atoll when it was exploded in the early 1940s. But uh, the only difference here is that the the government has yet to evacuate Carlsbad. You know, maybe the uh, Navy Navy hasn't figured out how to get the evacuation boats into Carlsbad yet. But there's an Obamacare aspect to this too. Uh, Obamacare has been designed with uh, computerized billing and coding that has a coding for every possible disease and ailment. So once they have these scans from these people and they get a baseline of what the of some level of radioactivity these people have been exposed to, then they can track these people throughout the rest of their life without these people even knowing it just by following the Obamacare reporting. Now, at first they might claim it's only metadata like the NSA says they only collect made it metadata and nobody's individually identifiable. But this is also a national security matter. So you can damn well be sure that uh, if you get these scans, and it might be good for you to get these scans, that uh, somebody's going to be tracking your health care for the next 40 years and they're going to be uh, doing statistical population studies. Bad times.